Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to another Marvel Crisis Protocol painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be painting Ghost Spider, aka Spider Gwen. Now I hesitate to call this one comic style because honestly there's just not a lot to do as far as black lining goes on this piece. Her costume has a very sort of light and soft look and thick heavy black shadows and black lining don't really come into play here. So I'm going to be doing comic style on the base, but the miniature itself is just kind of straightforward painting. So I'm going to begin by base coating the white parts of Gwen's costume with some P3 underbelly blue. Now because this is the first color I'm laying down, I'm not being too careful if a little bit ends up kind of outside the margins of the white areas. It's going to cover with black, which is going to cover really nicely. So again, I'm just not really worried if I'm a little sloppy here. Underbelly blue is a tiny bit translucent. You can see the gray primer just kind of slightly showing through. So there's going to be cases here I'm using two, maybe three coats to build the color up. The pattern on the back of Ghost Spire's costume gets a little more elaborate. You can see I'm trying to work around it, but again, if I make some mistakes, I'm not too worried about it. Her face is an interesting detail because it's basically a white mask inside of a white hood, but the inside of the hood is lined with magenta. And before I get too far into the rest of the white work, I'm going to go ahead and paint that inside edge with some P3 Murderous Magenta first, because I want to make sure if I have any corrections to make, I'm doing them now as opposed to when I've got a bunch of highlights down or something. The nice thing about doing this magenta inset earlier in the process is it takes away the need for some really, really delicate brush control. You know, instead of trying to use a really tiny fine brush and slide it between the mask and the outside part of the hood, I can be just a little bit sloppy, a little bit forgiving, and just clean it up after. Now the only other part of Gwen's costume that uses this color is the underside of both arms, and I'm going to go ahead and just paint that in now because the paint's already on my brush and my palette. It's two small areas, so I might as well just get it done. So pretty much every element on Gwen's costume that isn't white or magenta is black, and I'm going to be using Citadel Corvus Black as the base coat for this. I like Corvus Black because it's a little bit of an off black, it's actually just a really dark grey, and that leaves just a little bit of room in the color space so that if we want to do a little bit of black lining to bring the comic style feel into this, there's room for it to still show up. So where the black and white parts of the costume meet, you can see I'm working sort of a little bit away from the margin, a little bit away from where the white is, and then slowly bringing that in with just subsequent brush strokes until I just hit the right point. What this is letting me do is kind of calibrate my brush controls I'm going. It's making sure that the brush and I are getting along. I'm getting, you know, the nice straight line that I want and it's following the right curves. There's not bristles kind of flaying out doing their own thing. So it's letting me check the condition of the brush and the condition of my own painting as I apply it to the miniature. And then after a couple little test runs, you take it just that little step further to go right up to where you want those two colors to meet. This kind of approach working in towards a detail also lets me use a little bit of a bigger brush than I would be otherwise. With all the margins painted up, I'm just going to go back over all the larger areas and make sure the color's nice and even, there's no little spots I've missed. Now that I've finished up the black and magenta base coats, I'm going to come back in with the P3 underbelly blue and just clean up a few spots where I goofed. You can see a couple of the lines here just aren't quite as crisp as I'd like. And there's a few areas where the underbelly blue could just use a little more coverage. And here I'm using a coat of underbelly blue to clean up where some of the magenta got on the outside of the hood. Now there's a few fine details in white, these two little flares across her hips for example, and I've switched to a much smaller brush here, this is a size triple zero. And I'm using that just because I need some really really fine precision so I don't mess up the black on either side of the line. Lastly, I'm just cleaning up the margins where the magenta and white meet on the arms. Next, I'll be using some P3 Arcane Blue as the base coat for the lenses on Gwen's mask. Gwen's mask is pretty interesting in that the only real detail on them are these lenses, but they do also get a magenta outline, and that's not really a sculpted detail, it's just something you either have to choose to ignore or freehand on. And now switching back to P3 Mur And now switching back to P3 Murderous Magenta and using my size triple zero brush, 
I'm going to paint that very thin line around the outside of the eyes. And what I've decided to do here is paint it a little bit bigger than I need it, and then frame it back in later with a little bit of white. At this point, I tried something. I made a 50-50 mix of P3 Murderous Magenta and P3 Moro White, and used that to sort of feather out the edge of the outline. Ultimately, I decided I didn't really like how this looked, and I paint back over this with some white later, but I wanted to leave this clip in the video because I wanted to show you that my process often involves a little bit of experimentation, and sometimes things just don't work out. And here I am again, coming with a little bit more P3 Underbelly Blue. I'm using this just to clean up the white base coat, cover up those areas with the light magenta, and fix the couple little smudges that are on the top of the hood. Next, I used a little bit of P3 Mora White to add a small bright point to each of Gwen's eye lenses. From there, I mixed a little bit of Mora White and Arcane Blue together and used that to just feather out the bottom of that Mora White spot. So the last element of Gwen's costume that needs a base coat are her ballet slippers, and for that, I'll be using Citadel Sotec Green. All right, all the base coats are down. It's time to start doing a little bit of highlighting. Here I've mixed some P3 Murderous Magenta with P3 Moro White. And I'm using that to just add a little bit of a brighter spot to some of the magenta webbing that's on the inside of the arm here. Now using some Citadel Sotec Green and a very well pointed brush, I wanna pick out the raised ridges of those webbing details on the inside of each arm. This is fairly slow methodical work and I'll honestly find myself holding my breath a lot when I'm doing this kind of painting. Here I've mixed a little bit of P3 Moro White into the Sotec Green to make a lighter variant, and I'm using that just to pick out the uppermost bits of this webbing, creating a little bit of a highlight. I'm also using that same green and white mix to add a highlight to her belly slippers. As a random aside, can we just take a moment to acknowledge the fact that Sotec Green is not green whatsoever? Even my five-year-old son was asking me why I kept calling this color green, and I don't have a good answer for him. So I've mixed in a little bit more Moro White here, creating basically a blue off-white, and I'm using that to add one more highlight to the shoes. Now I'm going to start adding highlights to the white parts of the costume using P3 Moro White. This paint is a little bit translucent, so I'm going to build this directly on top of the underbelly blue. I don't need to worry about any real glazing or transitions. It kind of does that on its own. I'll just build up multiple layers where I want it a little bit brighter, and that really takes care of things. As far as where the highlights should go, I'm basically looking at the model from the top down, and whatever surface is facing upward is where I'm placing the most highlights. There's a few little exceptions to that, like the shoulders are kind of covered by the hood, but should still have highlights on them, so I consider them an upward facing surface, even though they're blocked by another surface. And that's just kind of my highlighting process, just look at the model from the top down, paint what you see, and leave a little bit of some gaps to show the muscle definition. Now I am later going to come in with a bit of a darker color and do a little bit of comic style lining. I'm not going to do it in black on this model, because I want her to feel very light and kind of willowy and black lines have a weight to them they feel heavy and so I'm actually going to use some of the grave digger denim watered down just a little bit to add a little bit of lining just around her shoulders her armpits her elbows and around the hood and that's really about it the rest of the comic style is really going to come into the base so here I'm coming in on the hood with a second coat just to bump that white value up a little bit more Now for highlighting the black parts of the costume, I'm going to start with P3 Gravedigger Denim. I did just mention I'll be using the same color for a little bit of lining on the white, 
I like when I can find multiple uses for a color on the same miniature because it kind of gives a little more of an authentic comic feel when the palette's a little bit shorter, when colors kind of reappear in different places. There's just something very old school comic about having different elements share the same color just because that's how the printing process kind of worked back in the day. Now, just like with the white, I'm looking at the model from the top down to decide where to place these highlights. There's a couple exceptions to that, like there's some seams on the side of her leggings. Also, even though it's not an upward facing surface, I made sure to put a little highlight on her abs because Gwen is a very fit character. She's got some good muscle definition there and we don't want to just like let that detail go to waste. You might notice that this color doesn't blend well to the Corvus Black. There's, It's a pretty big value jump. It looks kind of sketchy and weird. It's a little messy. What I'm gonna be doing next is coming in with a blend of those two colors, Corvus Black and this P3 Gravedigger Denim, and just kind of feathering up these highlights I've created. So I'm sort of sketching in the highlights first and then blending them out afterwards. There's a decent number of little wrinkles and folds in around the joints, around the hip, around the knee, and you can use that to decide where some highlights should go as well. And now here I've gone ahead and made a 50-50 mix of Gravedigger Denim and Corvus Black, added a little bit of water to it, and I'm just using that to basically feather up or smudge up the edges of the Gravedigger Denim highlights I made. And this just helps blend those highlights back into the base coat. And for the record, you can use this method on any sort of highlighting. It's really easy to take a significantly brighter color, jump up a few steps in color value, figure out where your highlights go, and then just kind of work it back to the base coat again because it lets you really quickly visualize where those highlights are without building up layer after layer after layer. So I'm gonna add one more layer to the black parts of the costume using some Citadel Sotec Green. Just a little bit of highlighting at the brightest points. That's gonna be the top of the chest here, the knees, the hips, a few other random places. And I'm using Citadel Sotec Green because it pairs nicely with the Gravedigger denim. But again, it also lets me pull in a color I've used elsewhere on the model. It kind of helps establish that color recycling feel that makes this kind of feel comic-y. It's just one of those little subtle hints you can do to sort of pay homage to the art style. Now that said, reusing colors like this is just a really good habit in practice anyway. It helps tie models together, helps keep paint jobs kind of feeling cohesive, and it also means there's just less paint on your palette, so you're saving paint, you're using fewer colors. It's just good habit. Now I'm going even further, this time I've mixed just a little bit of white into the Sotec Green. And in fact, this color was already made up for highlighting the shoes, so I'm just using that. Again, recycling something that's already on my palette. And I'm just picking out those brightest, brightest points. A little bit on the hips, a little bit on the abs, a little bit on the knees. Just little point reflections that help make the outfit feel a little bit shiny, like it maybe is like a Lycra or a spandex or something. That's really what I'm going for here, is just these kind of little specular reflective points, just a tiny bit brighter than everything else around them. And now I've gone back to the P3 Gravedigger Denim, and I've added a little bit of water to this because I'm trying to create some very, very fine lines. I'm using this where I would normally use Hagen's Black Magic as my comic style liner because there's not a lot of lines to add here, and I want the lines to feel a little bit softer, a little less weighty. Black lines feel heavy. They feel like they create solidness. That's a word, right? They feel big, they feel substantial. And by making these lines out of a bit of an off gray, you know, it's not nearly as dark, it's a little bit softer, it makes the surfaces feel softer. Now this is normally a technique I talk about painting things like fur and skin, where you maybe don't want a heavy black line because you want to imply the surface is a little bit soft itself. 
You know, with a character like Gwen, we're using lighter lines, not because she isn't solid. I mean, she's still a superhero. She still hits hard, but we want her to also feel light and graceful. That's really kind of the, you know, the crux of this character. She's wearing ballet slippers to combat for Pete's sake. Now I'm going to cheat here and just skip the basing step of this video. Crisis Protocol bases are almost uniformly the same, so you can see how I approach my bases with either Groot, She-Hulk, Captain America. There's lots of them on my channel. That aside, Gwen was a really fun miniature to paint. She let me bring out a lot of colors I don't use often. Turquoises, magentas, and even Gravedigger denim just don't end up in my palette very often. So it was really nice just kind of flexing some creative muscles and using some colors I just don't get to play with too much. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you do follow along with it, feel free to tag me on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to see what you do. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic. I just want to take a moment and thank everyone who has supported the creation of this video and many others over the years. My patrons over at patreon.com slash epic duck, my Twitch subscribers, and just my loyal fans. There's been a huge outpouring of support, especially for Comic Style Painting, but just everything I do in general, there's people behind me. I can't do this without you. I appreciate it so much. Everyone, your names are all over here. You know who you are. Everyone who's helped make this happen over the years who's kept food on the table, kept the roof over my head, kept the lights on, kept the stream going. I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you want to join the flock, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Five bucks a month gets you access to some behind the scenes stuff, gets you the unedited versions of these videos, PDF guides, and my eternal gratitude. Thank you so much.